This extended MTQ task is all about a taxi firm. I like to read a little bit of background first before looking at the options. So the taxi firm owns 350 taxis and had sales of 10 million in the last year. And they're considering a new system to track the taxis. And it tells me all of the costs and benefits of this new system down here. Oh, I can already see this is going to be something to do with net present value if I'm told all of these things like cost of capital. And then down to the first task. The first task is to work out to determine whether a computerized tracking system should be introduced. Are each of these costs relevant or irrelevant for a net present value evaluation? So I just like to organize my, thought, my thoughts first of all. So just remembering my notes on relevant costs. A relevant cost has to be something in the future, which means it's not sunk. It hasn't happened in the past. It has to be incremental. And that means it doesn't change. It has to be incremental, which means that it does change as a result of the decision. And thirdly, it needs to be a cash flow. That means it's not an accounting estimate. So not something like depreciation, for example. So let's run down each of these then. The first, the computerized tracking system of 2.1 million. What are we told about that? Ah, oh, that's point one in the scenario. The computerized tracking system would cost 2,100 to implement. So would cost means it's in the future. It hasn't happened already. So it meets our first test. Incremental, does it change because of the decision? Yeah, we're only going to spend this money if we decide to take out the system to do it. And is it going to cost us cash? Is it always an accounting estimate? Well, at the minute, it is an estimate, but we're going to have to pay that 2100 So it is cash. So out of my three options here, that is a relevant cost because it meets the three criteria. What about the next one? Depreciation of 420000 in each of the five years. It's future because it hasn't happened already. It's changing because of the decision, because we're only having that depreciation because of the, um, the, the, the system that we're buying. But it is not a cash flow. It's an accounting estimate. And so it fails the third test. That's irrelevant. Let's go down to the next one. Staff training costs of 425000 And we're told about that here. 75,000 has already been spent on staff training, so that can't be relevant, the 75, because that's a sunk cost to evaluate the potential of the, the, the new system. That happened in the past, that 75,000. Further training costs, so extra training costs, would be required in the first year if the new system is implemented. Great. So they would be required, their future, incremental because it's only if the new system is implemented that I'd spend them. And is it a cash flow? Yes, I'm going to have to spend that money. And so that is a relevant cost. It meets all three criteria. New staff total salary of 120,000 is the next one. Ah, well, here we are, point six. Six new members of staff would be rec recruited to manage the new system at a total cost of 120,000 per annum. Future cost, yes, because I'm only recruit I'm recruiting them to manage the new system, so I don't have these staff already, and they're changing. Yeah, I don't have the staff already, so that that's changing because of the decision. And am I going to have to pay cash? Yes, I am going to have to pay these people cash for their wages. So yes, that's a relevant cost. It meets all three criteria. The next one, staff training cost of seventy-five thousand. Oh, I remember that from here. It's that 75 there, isn't it? 75,000 has already been spent. And because it's already been spent, it is in the past. It doesn't meet our first test. It's not a future cost. So that is irrelevant. And the last one, interest cost of 150,000 per annum. Ha, <laughs> this one's a funny one. So the interest cost is going to be on point eight here, the money that I borrowed to finance the project. And that's going to cost me 150000 a year. Now, I'm going to have to pay that interest in the future. That's a future cost. So it meets the first test. I'm only going to have to pay it because I'm borrowing the money to do the project. So it is incremental. It changes because of the project. And it does meet the third test too. I'm going to have to pay cash for that interest. But it's not a relevant cost. Do you remember why from your studies? 
it's because of this, that cost of capital there of 10%. When I do an MPV calculation, I not only have the cash flows, I also have the, the, the cost of capital at the bottom, the discount rates. And those discount rates take into account interest, risk, and inflation. The interest cost of 150000 a year is wrapped up in that 10% discount factor. So if I was to include it as a cash flow and in the discount factor, I would be double counting, which is not allowed. So interest, just remember that one. Interest is included in the cost of capital. We do not include it as a as a cost um, in our cash flows. Okay, there's our first task done. On to task two. Calculate the following values if this computerized system is implemented. So what would be the incremental sales in year one, the savings in vehicle costs in year one, and the present value of the maintenance costs over the life of the contract? Ah, oh, we're going to have to do some calculations here. So the incremental sales in year one, first of all. That's point four. Sales are expected to rise to 11 million in year one if the system is, if, if the system is implemented, and then by 5% a year. If the system is not implemented, sales would be expected to increase by 200,000 per annum. So what are the extra sales in year one because of the um, b b because of the new system? I'm going to have to go back up the top here ah, to get my current sales level. So current sales level is 10 million. OK, so my current sales level is 10 million and it tells me they're expected to rise to 11 million if the new system is implemented. And what about if the system is not implemented? If it's not implemented, sales would expect it to, be, to increase by 200,000 per year. So they would grow anyway. They'd grow from their existing level of 10 million plus 200,000. So that would be 10.2 million. So the incremental sales, the difference between the 11 and the 10.2 is 0.8 million. That's the extra sales that we're going to make because of the new system. So let's put that answer in. My incremental sales in year one, 0.8 million. But it doesn't like my answer at 0.8 million. And actually you can see how all of these numbers are written. They're written in thousands, aren't they? So let's try putting it in, in thousands. Excellent, that worked. What about the savings in vehicle running costs in year one? Let's go back into the scenario for this. Oh, despite increased sales, savings in vehicle running costs are expected as a result of the new system. These are estimated at 1% of total sales. So to work this out, we're gonna to have to take the year one sales and times them by 1%. The year one sales are expected to be 11 million. And putting that into my calculator to times 1% is obviously times 0 0.01. That comes out at $110,000. So I can now put that number in. And it doesn't like commas, so I need to be careful when I'm putting it in. Lovely. Then, finally, the present value of the maintenance costs over the life of the contract to the nearest thousand. Ah, so the maintenance contract is 75,000 per year for five years. It's a five year annuity, an equal annual cash flow. And it tells me that the cost of capital for the business is 10%. So instead of doing a long discounting calculation where I do each year individually, I can use the five year annuity factor. Let's get, and we're gonna to have to make sure it's at 10%. So let's get the relevant um, discount factor up on screen, annuity factor on screen. So I'm going to my annuity table and I'm after the 10% column here and the number of years, five years. So the figure that I'm looking for is this 3.791. 
So that's 284325. Now, I just want to make sure I answer the question properly. The present value of this maintenance cost over the life of the contract to the nearest thousand. So to the nearest thousand, then that is 284. And so it's 284,000 that's going to go in here. Excellent. What a nasty little trick for them to put in there. If I put in 284325, because they've told me specifically to do it to the nearest thousand, I wouldn't get the mark. So you've got to read the question really carefully. On to task three. We're told the company wishes to maximise the wealth of its shareholders. It's currently correctly calculated the following measures. The IRR is 14%. Roki is 20%. The payback period is four years. Now, this is a fiddly little question where we're, we're having to work out which of these is true and which of them, and therefore the other three are incorrect. But before I do that, I just want to make sure that I understand what each of these three things means. So with IRR, I find it most helpful to draw myself a little graph, a little picture of what IRR means. I find it easiest to visualize. On the bottom is the cost of capital percentage, and the top here is my MPV, this line. And an IRR of 14% means that this point here is 14%. That's my IRR. What the IRR is, is the break-even point of the project, the break-even cost of capital. And as you can see on the graph, if the cost of capital is less than 14%, the project will have a positive MPV. If the cost of capital is more than 14%, the project will have a negative MPV. What about the return on capital employed of 20%? What does that mean? So I can remember my formula for the row key. It's my profit before interest and tax or operating profit, depending on what the question gives you. So the return that the business is making divided by the amount of capital employed that it has, the amount of debt and equity in the business. Okay, and it's a measure of how efficiently the company is using its capital, the money that's been invested in it, to generate a profit that can be returned to the investors. A company with a higher ROKI is using its capital more efficiently to generate a profit that could then be returned to the shareholder. And what about payback? What does payback mean? So the payback of four years means that it takes four years to get back your investment. In this question, it's going to take four years for the project to make enough cash. And that's critical about payback. Payback relies on cash. Take four years for us to get back enough cash to repay the money we invested. I think it was 2.1 million. It doesn't matter for this question. OK, now that I've organized my thoughts about what these three things are, I can now go through each of these statements. The project is not worthwhile because the IRR is less than the row key. Now, that's not correct. The IRR is measuring something completely different to the row key. The IRR is the break-even point of the project in terms of cost of capital. And the row key tells us how efficiently it's using capital. The two are measuring completely different things. It's not fair to compare them, apples and pears. The project is worthwhile because the IRR is greater than the cost of capital. What was the cost of capital in this question? Ah, yes, the cost of capital was 10%. So if I kind of put that on my graph, does this one make sense? The project is worthwhile because it's got a MP, it's got a IRR greater than, and it is greater than, the cost of capital. That is a roundabout way, a, a slightly strange examiner way of saying the project is worthwhile because it has a positive MPV. If the IRR is greater than the cost of capital, then the project has a positive MPV. And so the second one looks correct to me. But what I like to do before I finally answer is 
go through three and four and make sure that um, that, that I'm, I'm, I'm happy that they're wrong. So the project is worthwhile because the IRR is a positive. So the IRR being positive, no, because if let's say that the company, that let's, let's say we had our existing IRR of 14%, but the company had a, a, a cost of capital of let's say 20, I know this isn't drawn to scale, what that would mean is that the project would have a negative MPV at the company's cost of capital and destroy shareholder wealth. So the third statement is factually incorrect. It's not because the IRR is positive. The project's worthwhile because of the difference in the IRR and the cost of capital. And then the fourth one, the project is not worthwhile because the payback is less than five years. Now, I need to go back in the scenario for this. What does it tell me about any payback criteria? Is there anything about payback criteria? No, there is nothing about payback criteria. And so that final statement there, well, it could be true or it could not be true. What we need to know for this one is what's the company's payback target? If the target was, let's say, two years, then th this would be correct because the payback is worse than two years. But if the company's target is, let's say, 10 years, this would be wrong. But we don't know the target. We need to know what the target is to be able to assess this one. So this is a distractor. It's neither true nor false, but we, we don't know. So the one that is true is the second one.